Hi everyone, my name's Anthony Cummins, welcome to this. This is our final episode, the 15th episode of Understanding Japanese Armour. So what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to talk about banner poles actually, so on the back. But first, don't forget, get yourself a copy of Samurai Arms, Armour and the Tactics of Warfare by Natori Ryu. Now, the Samurai Banner on the back. We learnt in the first Natori book that there's a certain, a certain way you have to deal with um, the five elements, so the yin yang theory that moves into the five element theory that becomes cycle of creation, cycle of destruction, and that your armor is based on understanding these concepts of chi basically and yin yang, and this idea of creating energies that focus in the right way, depending on the ancient Chinese ways. And banners are no different, so the banner has got to really stand out. However, the banner pole itself is picked on a specific day. It's picked from a banner that's in a specific direction that is only for you, basically, and to do with your own um, cycle of generation and regeneration, if you like, in the five element theory. But also, what a lot of people don't realise is there are superstitions about banners. So it, we do know from the Gumpo Gyoshu manual that if a banner goes a certain way, then it's bad luck, and if it shifts this way, it's good luck. So what we find in Natoriyu is actually a way to hold the banners down and stop them, and make them ride up easier and down so they don't quite fly all over the place. And I'll put a picture here, this is it, and the idea is it's little bits of bamboo tied together that you use to go up and down the pole and basically attach the bottom of the banner to, so it doesn't ride too high. Now of course, all that, so what you've got to remember here is you've got a banner pole that's designed for you, it's got your personal, um, it basically fits in with your personal creation cycle. It's weighted down with these little rollers so it doesn't go all crazy and then you get bad luck. But at the same time, it's got like an angled iron bar. So if you do break your banner pole, you can make a new one and fit it into the bamboo, put some new stuff on, get your, ba get your banner going and crack on. Now what you don't realise, or what a lot of people don't realise, is that most samurai, if at all samurai, would have a banner of some form. You don't put your banner on in night attacks because nobody can see it. So what's the point? It's like, I put my banner on. Nobody can see you. It's dark. Okay, right. I'll take this makeup off. You know, that sort of stuff. And then, of course, in bushed area, bushes, when you're going for a, a raid through bushes, you can't take your banner. But on the whole, you must have your banner. In fact, you need to take permission or need to ask permission to take your banner off sometimes. Or, Natoriu says, if the guy has got no banner, He's either the lowest of the low or really high because he doesn't need permission to take it off. He can do whatever he wants. So he's really high. So they say, check the armor. If the armor's too expensive, that doesn't mean it's got lots of gold on it, but basically it's well-made armor, a really quite well-made, and the guy's not got a banner, you know he's high ranking. Where if it's not greatly made armor, he's got no banner, he's low ranking, he doesn't even get a banner. But on the whole, most samurai would have a banner. So you've got to think, when, when you're thinking about samurai and samurai armour, get them banners in your head. Banner, the pole is important to you. The day you pick it is important. The direction it's growing is important. Whether the flag goes up and down is important. And also, uh, the angled fix to keep it there is important. Not That's just more practical, but the point is, is that you can insert these, put them on, and make sure your banner works properly in that fashion. Now, banners are very complicated in Samurai War. There's lots and lots of complicated elements. So, um, but on a simple, a simple idea is that you must know that you have a banner on your back that either says what division you're from, shows you as an independent warrior, someone who's, you know, you've got your own stuff on there, or you're a lord and everybody's carrying your banner, which is the same, you know. Now, as the famous story of the white banners, which in the West is cowardly, but in Japan it's not. White is not cowardly in Japan. And the idea is that the order was given out, everyone to wear banners um, with a centipede on. And this guy, so all the centipedes are on it. And this guy charges out and uh, he's just got a white banner. And people pull him in, Who's, why, where's your, where's your banner? Where's your centipede? And he goes, I've got one, and he's got this tiny little centipede t painted on it at the bottom. He says, still on there, but you all recognise me because I am the only one that's got a blank white banner, and you know who I am. This is my name. I've not broke the law. I've got the centipede on it. You never said what size it had to be. Now watch me perform. That's an example of using banners in Japan. Okay, thank you very much for keeping up to date with the series. Hopefully that's all 
been great and educational for you do get yourself a copy of the book it's samurai arms armor and the tactics of warfare you know re-watch the series again if you want to there's plenty of information there but at the end of the day you can go and mine that book and get loads out of it okay my name is anthony cummings thank you very much